What's going on guys? In this video series, I'll be covering how to create, personalize, and learn your own routes. Coming up as a player in M+, one of the most important skills outside of playing the game is making a route that will lead your group to a successful key. While I believe it's completely fine to follow a route made by many experts out there, you can always find ways to make it more accessible to your group's comp or skill level. When it comes to creating these routes, there are three different goals we want to hit. The first is pride timing and where we feel it's a must have. The second is which mobs are worth fighting. And the last one is a bit more personalized where you might want speed over safety, or the other way around. Generally, this is where the routes have the biggest variance for different groups. You might want to pull larger or smaller based on how strong your group is, or certain skips that might be much riskier or harder to pull off with a less organized group. So for the first dungeon I would like to recreate a route for is the other side. Now for what we need in terms of pride, we need it on Hakkar for sure, and we need it on Dealer. Those are the only two mandatory prides there are in this dungeon, so we have to route around that. And as for what is inefficient to fight, that's mostly going to be the trash in the Mechagon area. These you have to fight by themselves for the most part, and they give very little count compared to everything else. 5 count each, 8 count, we can compare that to the Arden Wheel trash where we have these birds giving 4 count each, and we can easily pull anywhere from like 10 plus of these to 20 of them, depending on how good your group is. Now, that would mean that if we want to skip Mechagon area stuff, we would have to pull more in Ardenweald, and we'd have to do some type of risky skip. For a group of my level, we ideally go for the risk and try for speed rather than playing it safe. And one way that we have discovered out of how to skip this area is to have an engineer deactivate this. Someone who can stealth up ahead like a druid. Then we can invis pot here and invis belt the rest of this down to over here. We could also do some type of death skip or maybe we can utilize windrush totem, stampeding roar with invis pot to go all the way. But regardless, we're going to come up with a way to skip. So the standard route generally goes like this. We want pride on the first boss, but if we go in a straight line here, we actually don't get pride. So that alone doesn't work. Now, we have to come up with a solution. We could opt in to skip this pack, which will actually end up giving us pride. But the problem with this is that we would have to kill this extremely evenly, otherwise we get pride during the poll, making it extremely difficult. So what people have been doing is, they actually come here and fight these trash first which gives them 20% pride for their enraged spirit, and that's not bad. And you can come over here and you'll get 40% pride for her car. This actually works extremely well because not only do you get 40% pride for her car, but you can also bloodlust the first pull, and generally it would come back up for her car at 40%. In Tyrannical, not as much, but in Fortified, it will definitely come back up. Now, my problem with this route is that it would require backtracking. We would have to come down here, fight this pack, fight this one. You're doing two extremely dangerous back-to-back -back tank pulls. Then you have to come down here, and then you have to go back up. Which is anywhere from like a 20 to a 30 second time loss. And that actually adds up and it's a lot for a higher level group. So what I want to try is... I want to try going Arden Wield first. That way we can just get 100% pride in Hikar. Rather than going here and then back. So, one thing I do know though is, if we kill this first pack and then we go Ardenweald first, we actually end up fighting the Spirit as well, because the Spirit is over here, generally. And because there's an urn over here, I know where the urn locations are, this could actually make this pull extremely worthwhile doing. If you can somehow combine an Enraged Spirit with this pull, you're easily saving anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute, because the Spirit by itself requires a lot of time, where you have to solo pull it, and it requires a lot of cooldowns. But if we can lust this and use the urn and fight all this at once, this is possible for a higher level group. So this alone is a massive time save, and then we go into Arden Wield. Now, over here, we're getting 20% count, so that I can get our first pride. And with that pride, we can actually pull pretty large. So we can end up pulling all this stuff over here, depending on the affixes, of course. But these are ideally mobs I want to fight. They're all extremely easy mobs, and they give a ton of count. The only thing we're watching out for in this whole area is 
the hatchlings because they aggro the matriarchs and the matriarchs themselves. So regardless of how we want to fight this, we can get 40% off of these trash. And that'll give us pride. Now we, we sort of want to make good use of this pride. And something that I've thought of is maybe fighting this dragon along with all this trash over here. Either fighting this dragon or we can fight this matriarch. These matriarchs. But if we combine all of this, we can easily do this with the pride buff and we have the urn still. So this could be a pull for our group potentially. And then, like I've said, we need pride on dealer. So we need to somehow get 60% for the rest. So this actually gives us 60%. Now we do want to incorporate these blade leaks as well because they're easy count. But we would have to be careful of this just because pulling all this means that we're going a bit over 60. And we would have to kill it a bit more even, otherwise we get pride in the middle of the pull. And that can be extremely dangerous. But this is a lot of easy count right here. And we do end up getting pride for the dealer. So we've fulfilled two of our goals with creating a route so far. Now let's see where this ends up leading us. We'll just end randomly add count for now and see what happens. So here we get 70%. And like I've said, we want to skip as much of this as possible. We can actually skip to these oils, and the oils are not that bad to fight. They're 18 count for all of them. Not too bad to fight. We definitely have cooldowns for them. Because it's not worth using cooldowns on Mill House. You ideally want to have it for Maleficent. Now if we do it like this... We end up getting really not so good count here actually. We're forced to have either 77% or if we somehow skip this spirit first and fight this, we're spawning pride early which is an issue. But we could actually use this pride to fight this mask. So if we can somehow skip this mask and fight this pack first, that would give us 80%. We could also try trimming some trash from some Arden wield area too. But I don't know if that will give us enough count. We'll try going with this for now. We'll get 80% off of this and then we can fight the spirit with it. Then let's see how much count we get. So we actually end up having almost perfect count for the most part. We're 3 over, meaning that we can take something out. But it would be hard to find something to take out. But we've actually managed to make a route where I randomly click mobs and we have enough count. And it's fulfilled the goals that we have. So we have a Pride on Dealer as the first boss, and we'll have Lust, and we'll have Pride on Hakkar, and we're also skipping all this extremely inefficient count. So what are the downsides of this route though? There's a couple of downsides so far. One is that there's a lot of risk in this route. We have this mass that we have to deal with, or Enraged Spirit. Since it's always going to be here, by the time we finish fighting this pole, we either have to wait for this to patrol away, or we have to fight it together with all this, which is an insane time save, but it's very high risk. Then we have to deal with this skip over here. If this goes really bad, this could be a really big time loss too. But if we can somehow execute this every single time a good way, we actually end up saving a ton of time by fighting all this in not fighting all this inefficient mobs. And this is probably the third problem. It's trying to get a good pride on the enraged spirit. Or just getting a good pride in general, because if we fight this pack, we would have to kill the death speaker first, otherwise we'll end up having pride during this pull. And it's extremely bad. But all in all, I do like this route a lot, and I will be trying this out just to see how it goes. But in short, that is how you would create a route. We look for pride timings, we look for where is inefficient, and then we want to look at what are the possible risk and rewards that we can get. So if we were to try to make this route more accessible to lower level groups, or just pugs in general, you can still keep this general pathing. It's just in this area for example, you might want to opt out taking the mask into the pole, and maybe just fight the spirit by itself, and over at Arden Wield, Similar idea, where you can just split up some of these poles and make them a bit smaller. That's not going to make the route so much slower, but rather much safer. Over here as well, maybe you might want to incorporate a bit more mobs, so that you can have an easier time invising potting through. 
and just in general figure out what are the hard parts for you guys figure out what is actually easy and just try to combine certain ideas together if you guys would like to see more videos like this for other dungeons let me know down in the comments below thank you all for watching if you guys liked the video hit the like comment subscribe and i'll see you soon